Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to Fun Guy Live. We had to do mouth trumpet songs because we couldn't afford the professional song. We'll get that in the works though. Thank you so much for joining us. This is our very first episode of Fun Guy Live and we're going to be talking about live video for marketing and sales and how to connect with your audience. My name is Matt Cornelison. I am a video producer, founder of Fun Guy Media, and with me, as always and into the future, is my crew, Ashley and Demian. They are back there. Give them a round of applause. If you're watching, they're making this thing happen. They're on the ones and the twos, mixing it up and all that kind of fun stuff. So this is really exciting because this is the first time we're doing a live streamed show and it is a big deal. And today we're talking about how, it's very meta. It's about how to do live video events. And this is a live video event. So we're kind of showing as well as telling. And there's a couple of things going on right now. Of course, I don't need to explain this, but with the coronavirus and all of the concerns that we have as marketers and sales folks, uh, like what are jobs even supposed to be doing right now? Like what activities should we even be doing? And how do we connect with people given all the challenges in the world right now? And we think that live video can be a really powerful way to do that for a couple of reasons. One, all of these conferences, well, first of all, <laughs> live video for us is a way for us to turn those lemons into lemonade. I had to cue that, our fun little graphic that we made a little wizard uh, zapping some lemons. We just think it's kind of, kind of fun. So anyways, <laughs> it's all about doing that. <laughs> Ashley and Demian are like laughing at me right now. Um, so a couple reasons why live video is a powerful thing. Number one, all of those conferences, those marketing and sales conferences that have been canceled, this can be a really powerful way to supplement that because there's nothing that replaces that in-person um, connection, but this is still a live moment and we're still going to be connecting with people in that same way. So there's a lot of power in terms of, of the live aspect of that. Um, the second thing is obviously just think about where your audience is right now, right? Nobody, everybody is on their screens. We're, we're tuning in via these things or our desktops or what have you. So we have to go to where our audience is, right? So this is, this is an attempt to do that. Um, and the last thing is we're going to be uh, talking to a digital expert about what we can do after the fact. After you create a live video event, how can you turn it into more content on demand? So there's a lot you can get out of doing a live video event. So this whole show, it's going to be a weekly show every Thursday at 12 p.m. It's based off of your questions. So everything that we talk about is going to be based off of the questions that you guys submit to us. And if you have any questions about live video or anything to do with the marketing and the sales and all the kind of stuff that we do, um, please send them, put them in the chat. If you're watching on Facebook or if you're watching on um, Vimeo, you can submit that to the chat. Ashley is hanging out back there. She's going to be moderating all this. So if you have those questions, let's taco about it. Woo! All right. Um, and if you have questions after you're watching this on demand, we're going to put an email up so you can connect with us there. Told you it was about questions. We actually solicited some friends and uh, collaborators to send their questions in about live video ahead of time. So let's go ahead and roll that beautiful bean footage. Hi, this is Scott Metcalf from the University of Chicago in the Career Advancement Department. I'm interested in the difference between a webinar, recording a webinar and a live video. What's the difference and why would I want to do a live, a live broadcast? Why would that help? Hey, what's going on team? My name is Paul. I am a gym owner here in Chicago. Uh, we do personal training and group fitness, but everything that we do right now is in person. So my questions for you are, what's the difference between a webinar and a live stream? And then part two is how can I leverage both to increase the customer experience um, for my clients and you know what are other products and you know solutions that we can do outside of just in-person classes. Okay, thanks in advance for your response. Thanks guys. 
Hi, my name is Stasha, and I'm interested in learning about live video for communicating and connecting with others. The question I have is, what technology setup do I need to get started? All right, thank you, Scott. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Stasha. Okay, first big question, what's the difference between a webinar and a live video event? Well, you guys have probably all sat through webinars before, right? It's typically somebody who is doing a PowerPoint presentation and it's one to many different people. Sometimes you have an expert sort of join you for that sort of a thing. And it's a great tool to connect with people for sales or on the marketing side to, to connect directly to an audience where there's some interaction there. Now, the difference between that and a live video event is, well, you're experiencing a live video event right now. What we're trying to do is we're trying to create a more engaging experience, right? This is something that you'd want to do when you want to create a branded experience. So you're seeing custom graphics fly in and out that, that sort of bring our brand to life. Um, we're doing more interactivity. We're, we're trying to up, to, up the uh, production value, so to speak, with more professional cameras and that sort of a thing because there is going to be a lot of noise out there and there's going to be a lot of webinars and a lot of people are going to be doing that. But how do you stand out and how do you rise above that noise floor? And we think that live video events like this is a powerful way to do that. So that is your, your answer for the difference between the two. Now, for the next question, we want to talk a little bit about how to improve the live video experience. And specifically, I want to focus on how we can do it after the fact after this live broadcast and with me to help answer that question we have our friendly digital dude digital guru Ross Palmer in the house I'm gonna put my headphones on so I can talk to him Ross how you doing I'm doing so well we're using the power of technology to remote you in from California IA that's right very exciting yeah. all right Ross is a digital expert. He does digital marketing and social media, and we work a lot together on helping clients do that sort of thing. So yeah. I want to talk to you, Ross. Tell me, first of all, what are some of the challenges in terms of content marketing in the first place? Uh, the biggest challenge is having enough content or getting more content. Pretty much nobody is putting out enough. Um, very few people are as consistent across multiple platforms as they can be with putting out content. Right. And so I think you know, obviously that's kind of the name of the game. I know as marketers, mm -hmm. sometimes we struggle to even just like, what can we do to get creative, yep. to continue to like keep the feeds going live with yep. our content? Um, what are your thoughts on how we can use live video after the fact on demand to help sort of feed the content hopper? Well, what you find is that a lot of people are, they're active on one platform of choice, like say it's Instagram or Facebook or LinkedIn. A lot of people say, I'm going to post one time a day on Instagram, but they neglect all of the other channels. But we know that there are many channels. There's LinkedIn, there's Facebook, there's Instagram. Now there's a lot of talk about TikTok for the younger kids and all of that, IGTV. So there's tons of different places that you can reach people, but a lot of how to put content on, let's say five or six different platforms in any given day, much less several times a day, you know, every day of the week. So one thing that I think people aren't doing enough of in general is they're not maximizing a piece of content like a live stream or a longer form video or recording of a conference. They're not maximizing it um, across the platforms as effectively as they could be. So instead of thinking like, okay, I've recorded this one thing and I'm going to put it on YouTube and then that's the end of it you think like, okay, we've recorded this hour long, 30 minute long live stream. How can we use that to create 20, 30, even 40 different pieces of content so we don't have to do this all the time? And the, the biggest tip that I would have for people right now is to, if you look at how people consume content on various platforms, that gives you a clue to what kind of content people expect. And you can take your recording and you can chop it up into something that's appropriate for those content platforms. Got so, it. So, so just as an example, and we got like five yes. seconds, Yep. what would you do for, how would we take this live stream and just say, put it on Instagram? How would we adapt it to that? Okay, so Instagram is viewed on your phone. It's a vertical format. So whoa, I would whoa, whoa, edit whoa. it to on your <laughs> vertical format. I would put subtitles over it. I would chop out one minute because one minute or less videos uh, work best on Instagram. 
So that's one fast thing you could do on LinkedIn. You could transcribe it into an article. Articles last longer on your LinkedIn profile. You can chop it into a video for YouTube. You can make an extremely vertical video for IGTV, 1080 by uh, 1920 dimensions or okay. TikTok. So that's got to be what I would do. Yep. So the, yeah, there's lots of ways to take it. I think for us, what we're going to do is we're going to take that exact uh, mm -hmm. advice and we're going to take this live stream and we're going to start to relate, re, you know, release little bits across the next several different weeks, right? So it kind of get as much bang for our buck as we can. Awesome. Ross, thank you, thank you so much. We will, we will give him a round of applause. We'll, we'll make sure we share your contact info. If you're looking for a little bit more digital marketing yeah. off, uh, advice, check sure. Ross out. We'll put that up after the stream. Cool. Thanks so much. Thanks, Matt. Appreciate it. All right. Next up, we want to show, give you guys, there was the last question there was, what is the technology that we use to do a live stream? So I want to give you guys a little bit of a sneak peek as to what that looks like. So I'm going to stand up here and give you a little bit of a tour. So check out our, this is our wide shot here. And what you're going to see is, obviously there's my little stage area. We have a, our professional C100 Canon camera back here. Back there, we've got the behind the scenes studio folks in full effect. We have this um, <clears throat> monitor that helps me know where my visual cues are so that I see what graphics are coming up next. So if I just give you guys a quick little list. So we have professional lighting. We have two different cameras. We have some software on a computer that we basically are using live stream from Vimeo as a way to broadcast out there. And there's a couple different connectors that you need to do that. So we're, we're doing this on, you know, a kind of the home studio level, but we also work with professional live stream teams when it, when there's big events and it's, that's needed. So that's the technology that we're using. And I think that answers those questions. Um, this might be a good opportunity to go to, uh, uh, our sponsors really quick. Shall we? This episode brought to you by Weird Smiles. Yeah. Weird Smiles, when you do something weird. Okay, um, sorry about that. <laughs> we just wanted to try that because we have this camera over here and the, all that to say that the sponsorship slots are wide open. If anybody wants to jump in and sponsor the show, you can tell that we, we could use that right now, maybe one day. Okay, I want to wrap this baby up with a little bit of food for thought. Now is the time to do the slow work, right? We're all used to running a million miles a minute, but we really just can't do that right now. And I think it's okay that we don't have all of the answers to all of these big questions. We're trying to figure this out together. That's why we're here to help. And you know, a couple things to think about here are, and think about some of the questions that we're, that we're trying to answer here. If you're in marketing or sales, um, or if you're a business leader, you know, we're often thinking about how much do we need to sell this month to meet our quota? Well, we really can't necessarily answer that question right now, but what about changing that question to what do we need to do to make more meaningful relationships with our customers in the long term, right? And so I think that's a question that we're trying to think about and we're trying to help folks with. Instead of, you know, in terms of a marketing message, here's what you should know about our products and services. What about, here are some ideas to solve some of your current problems that you're having right now. And we'll see what happens on the other side of this. So I hope that's helpful to think about. I hope that this episode was helpful and we hope that you can t continue to tune in every Thursday at 12 p.m. for Fun Guy Live. Thank you guys so much. We'll see ya. Wait, we have what? Oh, wait, you have, if you have questions, <laughs> check us out, send us an email at hi at funguymedia.com and we will get to your questions, all right? Thank you so much, Fun Guy Live. We'll see you on the flip side.